Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm going to try out a totally new technique for me to create a surreal sheep painting using just two colours. I'm going to be using watercolour, so just two colours, permanent rose and cerulean blue and then just a little bit of titanium white acrylic. So let's see how this goes. All right, well, I'm starting out with a light blue Sharpie. And my plan is to put in some fairly minimal outline for a couple of sheep and a lamb. I plan to have them um, at different distances, I think. So I've just realized as I'm chatting here, I've immediately made that ear a little bit too big. So let's make the head. Uh, a little larger. So the Sharpie, you know, because it's a permanent marker, as I've mentioned in previous vids, you know, it's uh, doesn't leave too much room for error. But, you know, with a little bit of experience, you can generally speak and cover up your mistakes. Um, and the watercolour paint that I'm going to use later, it's surprisingly good at covering uh, up the lines if you need it to. And then I can always use acrylic as well if necessary. But obviously, the main aim is to you know, I just want to get it right to begin with if I can. So, so we've got a couple of ears, we've got the top of a head, and then the eye. Probably don't want to indicate that too much actually, but the eyes are around about here, so that's that'll be enough for now, just those couple of little dots. And then we've got a couple of nostrils around about there and then a little bit of a jawline there and then the the back and the hind quarters of the animal coming out down around here And then it's about two and a half head heights until the bottom of the feet. So just measuring this on my reference to make sure I've got that about right. It's not too far out. I think I'm just going to put in a little line there and there to sort of indicate where the, the face of the animal is. Got a nice rounded belly there. And then one rear leg is kind of peeking through here. And the other one's back there somewhere. OK, so first animal in place. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is place another animal perhaps up here, but a little bit smaller. So So there's the line of the back and then the nose, a line for the head. Fluffy wool on top, a little bit of an ear showing there, another one there. Back of the neck. Sort of the folds in the fleece. It's another and the front leg comes down here.
rounded belly again, but then this time I've got a, a lamb I'm going to place. Uh, there's a lamb in my reference, which I'm just going to place here, which is more or less in keeping with the reference, actually. But um, in the reference, all three animals are kind of stood in a row, pretty much. So I'm deliberately putting these two on the left a little bit further back. Um, but I'm quite enjoying this kind of light blue, purple, um, violet, whatever it is. Marker colour. That's I feel that's working quite well. So there's the beginnings of the head of the lamb. And then chest comes down here. Now the back kind of lifts up a little bit in terms of the angle of the line. So we go to towards the rear end and then the, the legs are a little bit kind of splayed out probably for stability of standing I'm guessing or you know, perhaps he was just standing that way and then we've got a little bit of a long fluffy tail coming down there I'm struggling to see in my reference the other rear leg but I think it's just peeking through there couple of legs in front and then now we can go back to the the adult and pop in a rear leg and another rear leg there and that's probably enough initial line work for what I want to do for those three but now I'm going to put a couple of others just off in the distance maybe one up here and one up here as well So we'll put one up here, but as I said, I'm going to make this is another adult, and I'm going to make it much smaller. And in the finished painting, there may not be very much detail at all in the animal that I'm placing at the moment. That's enough for that one and then perhaps one way back here as well then whoops I'm on the brown pen that's the wrong one so then I'm going to put one more back here again pretty small So generally speaking, you see at the moment I've got these four head, 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 all to the left of the body. So, yeah, that's OK if that's what you want to do. But generally speaking, you know, when you look at a flock, there will be the odd one which is pointing the wrong way. You know, not always, but um, just generally makes for a, a little bit of a better composition, I think. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be pushing things a little bit into the surreal with this painting. So... You know, I don't have to mimic reality at all, but nevertheless, um, I feel there need to be elements of reality present so that, you know, it's a relatable image. So that's probably enough detail for that one. So I've got my little arrangement there. So my plan now is to, having turned the painting on its side, I want to create this sort of abstract background, somewhat reminiscent of a sky. And I'm beginning to do that with my big synthetic mop brush. And then I'm just putting some cerulean uh, blue on here. And although I'm being quite careful to put the brush strokes in horizontally and smoothly going right to the edge both edges of the paper 
Having done that, I'm now going to give that a bit of a quick blitz with the water spray and let that work its way down the paper. Um, and then while that's doing its own thing, I'm just going to grab a paper towel. I'm going to use this to just gently lift off some of the paint from within the outline of that front right hand angle that I put down before. Now I don't need to be too you know precise when I'm doing this I just need to get rid of most of it you know I, I just want to have a little bit of a pure island of paper there but um, it doesn't have to be perfect and having done that you can see that I've kind of uh, made a mark in the background which I want to lose so I'm going to add a little bit more water there and let that do its own, own thing. And we'll just wet the edge of that wash as well, just to let that bleed down. Okay. Well, I turned the paper back up the right way while the wash was still a little bit wet, getting an interesting cauliflower or two here, which I'm very happy with, that's fine. Some nice textures here as well. And now I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to work down from the top edge in the middle of the painting. I've got some permanent rose on my palette, which is a colour I've only used maybe once or twice before. Mixing that in with what's left of the cerulean blue. I actually squeezed out way more than I intended to uh, onto the palette, but there we go. Such is life. So let's put a little bit of that in there. And I like what's happening here on the right hand side of that wash. I'm going to keep the edges of this wash a little more broken. So the idea is to create some sky like colours in a fashion which I wouldn't normally do. So let's spray this with the uh, water as well. Get those beads at the edge of the wash moving. I want to preserve that bit if I can. We'll let that do its own thing again for a little bit. So once again I'm going to uh, lift off some of this rose wash where, where it's just kind of trickling down. And what's going on here now I like less than I did before so I'm just going to loosen that up again with the, the water spray hopefully move it around a little bit. Come on. That's a bit more. Yeah, I, I like that better than it was. Okay, so that's good. Just catch most of those drips where they go into the animal. And now I'm going to rotate 90 degrees again. Okay, well, rotated the paper 90 degrees again. And as I mentioned earlier, I uh, got way too much permanent rose there. So I hadn't intended to put a strong red colour in, in this on this left hand side of the painting. But I think I'm going to give that a go and see what it looks like. May as well um, go with the flow. So let's moisten up that edge of the painting. And, you know, we don't want to go too crazy. I don't want it to be sort of blood red, but um, we'll put that in. Hopefully that'll be, yes, yeah, so that's much more pure than the colour I've put down here, which had some of the blue mixed in. So I'm just going to break that bead up and kind of help this wash on its way down the paper. We'll try, you know, we're going to get a few drips and runs here. And I'm not sure how I feel about what's going on here, but it's kind of happened. So again, we'll go with it. I do like what's happening up at the top, though. And I think although my original plan had been to lift off much of the paint within the outlines, I think I'm actually just going to leave the wash blasting through the 
through the outlines of the animals. So um, let's break up that little grip there. In fact, let's do that with just a touch of water. Um, and then that leaves me one final rotation of the paper to, to do something similar here. So I'll go much more towards the blue again uh, for that section. So final rotation, painting is now upside down. I'm very happy with this wash, which is now on the right so far. The blue and the permanent rose are kind of separating from each other, which is producing some really lovely effects. I'm also very happy with this rather hard line I've got down here. So I'm going to try and hang on to that if I can. I'm not too worried if I lose it, but, you know, it'd be nice if some of it remained. I'm less happy with some of these cauliflowers, which I initially thought were going to add something to it, but now I'm not quite so convinced. So the next move is I've already got the permanent rose here in the central well. I'm going to pick up more of the blue that I was using before and we'll mix those two together again, but go with more of the blue in the mix this time. And what I plan to do is sweep from this hard edge, maybe leave a tiny gap to the left and let that run down and we'll see what that produces. So I'm gonna try and keep the way from that wash as best I can that I put down on the, on the right, the pinky wash, but uh, you know, as I said, I'm not overly concerned. It's kind of part of the part of the plan, really, to let this background do its own thing. And then hopefully as things dry, and the rose and the blue start to separate, there will be areas which um, only have the bare paper under the wash. And then there are going to be other areas where there's that first wash underneath. So, you know, that might produce some interesting effects. We'll see what happens. And again, this time I'm not going to try and lift out the, uh, the animals. So I probably went a bit further down the paper there as I was chatting than I intended, got a bit carried away there. But let's give this the old water treatment again. Just a little spray. And I think, I'm going, I think I'm going to have to give that a bit of a hit, which may cause me to lose some of that pink edge. But there we go. So we'll just be fairly gentle with that. And see what happens. I already like what's going on here, though. Um, so... Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I'm just going to break up the bottom edge of this wash here, though. And I still need to move the, the right-hand edge of this bit around as well. Come on. There we go. That's not too bad. Cool. So all I need to do now is just let that dry completely and then I'll be ready to turn the thing back up the right way and paint the animals. Now to begin to paint the animals, I've actually decided to keep the painting upside down and I've turned my reference upside down as well. And I've switched to a little flat brush, as you can see. And I'm using this to kind of come back in with the, the same blue that I used for the background washes, but applied a little bit more thickly. And hopefully there is uh, you know, some method in, in what I'm doing, as you'll hopefully see in a moment. So what I'm doing is I'm blocking in areas in my reference which are in shadow.
and then my hope is that when I lightly spray this with the with the water spray I say lightly spray but actually reasonably heavily spray um, you can see that's starting to move around a little bit now and I'm going to let that do its own thing for a few seconds and then come in with a paper towel and just pick up anything which goes too, uh, too wayward because I want to leave a little bit of a highlighted area along the top of the animal. So let's, uh, let's come back into the brush a little bit to help that on its way. So I'm hoping to make use of the watercolour running down the paper in the same way I did on the background. I'm hoping to you know, achieve a similar effect, but with a darker tone on the animals. We'll do something similar for this sheep over here as well. So it's a little dark patch of tone on the knees there in between the front legs. Kind of underneath the belly, a little bit on the hind quarters. And then there's a patch of shadow which would be to the right of the jaw, but because we're upside down, it's obviously over to the left. And there's a little bit of a line of shadow, which kind of, kind of comes down there. So again, we'll hit that with the water spray. I'm going to try and avoid this little patch of shadow as best I can. Let's get that moving a little bit. That's probably almost enough for that for that one, actually. Now we can apply a similar treatment, but because the animal's bigger, I can be a little bolder with my mark making. Same size brush, though. And again, just trying to mimic the big areas of, of shadow. And because... Um, you know, because this animal's larger scale, I can start to move the brush around a little more freely and start to mimic some of the texture texture as well. Then I can move across to the lamb. So a bit of dark, a bit of a dark area there on the front of the nose, this side of the head, a little line of shadow within the ear, this side of the neck. The legs are kind of brown, so that's obviously a darker tone than the, the rest of the fleece most of this side of the body is in shadow a leg over there darken this leg and again just a quick little blitz and then i can do a similar treatment on this guy too or this girl So again, uh, this animal has a patch of shadow under the, or under and to the right of the jaw. There's a bit of a dark area there on the side of the head as well, which extends to the top of the head and the ear. 
then I have a, most of the uh, right hand side of the animal so on our current left is also dark I'll get to that in a second let's just darken part of the legs under the chest there the other knee go under the belly here darken that rear leg. This one's not in too much shadow so I'll, I'll leave that for the moment. And then we've got quite a lot of darkness here on this side which extends up over most of the back. And once again you know what's coming, quick hit with the water bottle. And I'll let that do its thing for a few seconds. You can see I've got some nice textures being created over here, but some of the washes or some of the paint is kind of straying beyond the sort of lower perimeter of the drawing, which I don't want too much of. But on the whole, got some nice interesting textures. Some are starting to form here. So I'm just going to catch the odd drip. And then when we come back in just a second, I'll flip the painting up the normal way and we'll see how things look. So switching back to a round brush now, and um, I've mixed some of the permanent rose in with some of the blue to give me kind of a darker shadow colour. My current plan is to leave these two background sheep alone for the moment. What I'm going to do now is kind of enhance some of the drawing and kind of refine some of the shadows. So my thinking at present is that I'm currently done with these um, you know, random washes where I'm using gravity and the water spray. But, you know, we, we'll, uh, we await events. So working on this animal on the left, what I'm doing is kind of squinting at my reference and just trying to find the darkest shadows that I need to include to, um, you know, describe this animal in a recognisable way. So although we're, you know, definitely in the, the realm of the surreal, um, I still want these things to be recognisable as sheep. And then what, I, what I'll probably do later in the painting is just come in with a bit of white uh, acrylic to pick out some key highlights. So the idea is going to be that really there will be only three three colours if you include white as a colour. We'll just have the permanent rose, the cerulean blue and the white. But that said, I, I may an, end up adding a, a fourth to provide a little bit of warmth. We'll see, see how the uh, painting progresses. So moving across to the, the little lamb. So sometimes when we're painting, you know, to get a particular effect, it's often about not drawing everything, not trying to copy every little detail. I'm just trying to pick out the sort of absolute minimum of, of building blocks that you that you need in order to create the illusion. And we move across to this one over here.
And I'm kind of running out of blue on the palette now, but rather than immediately refresh, I've kind of decided to uh, just carry on with whatever colour is created by moving my brush around the central well. And because I've run out of blue, that's going to go more and more towards the permanent rose as time goes on. So I've switched now to my interactive acrylic. This is just titanium white. I've got a little flat uh, synthetic brush. It's a little bit frayed and I'm hoping that's going to allow me to use a little bit of dry brush to create some interesting texture on the fleece of these animals. So again, I'm trying to keep my mark making really simple and descriptive. So I'm going to start on this animal at the back here. and add a little bit of white to the head and the ears where the, the light is catching. So keeping in mind the kind of way the, the wool is wrapping around the chest of the animal in terms of the marks I'm making. And then a little bit of light on the, a little bit of white on the back there. I'll put a little bit on the upper part of the front legs and that's that one done I think. So I've switched to uh, a small round brush for this next animal because it's the smallest on the smallest in the painting and you know there's a definitely a line between having a nice large brush and being expressive and then just having it be so big that you can't actually do do what you want to do so um, let's put in a little bit of light on the left hand side of the head and the neck there and then i've got this line i, I don't know if you remember from earlier i made a mistake uh, when i was drawing with the sharpie so i've got two lines for the back and what i'm going to do is fill in the gap between those two lines as a little line of highlight along there, so kind of incorporating the mistake into the finished painting. The tail and the rear end of the animal are catching the light quite strongly there, as is this foreleg and part of the rear leg down here. And so for those two background animals, they're, I think they're done. They're meant to sort of disappear off into the distance. So back to the flat brush. And we'll put a little textured line of highlight along the back of this large sheep. We need some white on the face, on the, on the head. A little bit round the ear here, just touching the ends of the bristles onto the paper, which creates a lovely uh, textured mark, you know, something that you couldn't really create in any other way. Certainly you'd be there a long time if you were trying to do that with the point of a round brush. And you'd struggle to make it, um, make the effect as random as well. 
and you don't want to get too carried away with that technique so I've switched now to dragging the, the bristles just across the pa painting in the conventional way but then we'll introduce it again down here on the top of this leg overlap some of that dark colour there a touch as we come onto the chest And then we can move over to the lamb. A little flash of light on the top of the head. Get that to show up. Not really, but that's okay. This ear is uh, catching the light, as is the other one. Bit of light on the chest. And on the back, and on the front legs, bottom of the chest. And then I'm just going to come back to the animal from before and put a bit of a bit of a highlight on the top of the head there, just so that that doesn't disappear into the background too much. And then we can move over to the animal on the right. So again, the ears are catching the light a little bit. Put a little bit of light there on the head. There's not much there really, but I feel the need to just define the outline of the animal a little bit there. Uh, then there's some um, light here and over the nose, top of the head, a little bit um, here as well, not much. Down the left side of the neck. onto the chest and the left side of the body, top of the foreleg. That one was a mistake, but I think I got away with it, not with that too much uh, issue. A bit of the texture technique that we used on the other sheep over here. We'll put a little bit along the line of the back. Okay, so that's that level of treatment, um, you know, complete for the, for all of the animals. So I'm coming back in with the watercolours now, flat brush and uh, purple mixed up from the, uh, the blue and the permanent rose, but I'm hopefully pushing that a little bit more towards the blue. So I just feel the need to describe the form of this sheep on the right, on the left, sorry, uh, a little bit more precisely. With, you know, I don't want to go all tight and um, hard lines or anything, but some of the shapes of the shadows are just a, a little bit out <clears throat> and consequently not quite getting the effect I want for this, uh, this particular animal.
and we'll do something similar over here on the right as well. So it's a fine line between leaving enough simply suggested so that the viewer can kind of read into the image and you know kind of make of it what they will and then not having enough information so that you know it's just kind of confusing. Back in with the flat brush and the acrylics now. Just to enhance the, the light catching the left hand side of this animal. And we'll also Add a little bit over here. That was perhaps a bit heavy, but I think it's okay. And then coming in again with the small round and, and the watercolour. Just going to refine the um, shape of the nostrils. Put in a uh, little line for the mouth. Refine the shape of this eye a little bit. I'm going to leave the lamb as it is. find the shape of this front leg a touch it's 
so it's a uh, just a little bit better defined. And then we need to do something similar for the right hand animal. So put a little line in for the ear. Refine the shape of the eye, both on the right and the left. Shape of that nostril. As before, put in a little indication of the mouth and the jaw. Let's tidy up this ear a little bit as well. And one of the effects of putting in these little extra bits of line work is it adds to the sense of depth and pushes these background animals, um, you know, off into the distance a little more. And really, when you're doing something like a fleece, if you if you want to use lines, you want to let the brush kind of skip across the surface of the paper. You, you certainly don't want to get into creating a regular pattern. Um, so don't hold the brush too tight. And, you know, within kind of reasonable limits, you want to let it do its own thing. Now, on the whole, I'm uh, reasonably happy with where the painting is, but I just want to adjust the uh, some of the structure of the head and the body of uh, this one on the right here. Again, just to define things a little bit more, but you know, without losing all of the looseness that um, that I've got there. So the line of the back here, for example, wasn't quite correct. And uh, I want to just darken some of the shadows that I've got going on here. Let's get a bit more of the permanent rose in there. A little bit more.
So back towards the blue, I'm just putting a few uh, light touches on the left hand side of the face. On the top of the head here. Tighten up the shadow around the nose and the mouth. 